In this video, we're going to be talking about turbochargers and how to properly troubleshoot your system for low boost. So I get a lot of requests for boost or turbochargers and that I should do a video on one. So I decided to do a short class on troubleshooting boost issues, how the systems work, and pretty much everything you have to keep in mind when troubleshooting a low boost issue. And I think a lot of people get focused on one component when they're troubleshooting a boost issue, and that component's the turbocharger. Now, first part of the video, I'm gonna be going over components, and then I'm gonna be going over how they function, and then I'm gonna be going over how to troubleshoot them. But before I do that, I want to thank you to the people that have donated to my channel in the last week. We had Craig that has donated $50, Kyle $75, and Joel $20. Thank you all very much for donating. If you wish to donate, it's adeptape at yahoo.com on PayPal. Okay, on to the video. Thank you. So here we have a 3306 CAT turbocharger. Here is your oil supply line. And on the bottom is your oil return line port, although it's missing the line currently. You also have your wastegate hose. And on the right side of this, the yellow portion is your inlet housing. So air goes in there and then comes up, is boosted, and then pushed out of your inlet housing. So here's your intake turbine. And a good way to inspect it is to spin it. You can also feel for any slop or free play. If it seizes or won't spin freely, you have a bad turbocharger. So here's your exhaust turbine. It's also good to make sure that if you spin the inlet, that the outlet spins and vice versa. So here's your exhaust manifold, that the exhaust fumes go through the manifold into the turbo on the exhaust and then go through that turbine. Now there's your wastegate port. So when the wastegate opens, it does not go through the turbine. It bypasses it and comes through that port. And that's how the wastegate actually works. Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit about wastegates because I think um, some people think it's some sort of voodoo how they work. They're really, really simple. All it is is basically a small diaphragm with a hose that runs to it. And you could see in that previous video that there's a port that allows the exhaust gases to bypass the exhaust turbine. So if it, the exhaust gases bypass the exhaust turbine, they're not going to spin that turbine. So what your wastegate does is it gets a pressure signal from typically the inlet side of the turbocharger or sometimes the intake manifold, depending on what engine it is. And when it reaches a certain pressure, it lets some of the exhaust gas bypass the exhaust turbine, thereby reducing the boost. Because you have to remember that your exhaust turbine spins your intake turbine on the turbocharger. So that's pretty much all you need to know about the wastegates. Now on CAT, typically the wastegates are not replaceable. If you have one that's bad, you kind of got to change the whole turbo. Um, you can try taking the armature off and moving it to try and get it back to where it was. But the wastegates are really easy to troubleshoot, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So here we have a twin turbo setup with a wastegate hose. And the wastegate's pretty easy to troubleshoot. So let's say you suspect that the wastegate is bad and it is causing low boost. So all you need to do is take a pair of vice grips or inline hose pliers and pinch the wastegate so that the boost signal from the intake side is not reaching the exhaust side diagram. So then you would just run your truck down the road, typically loaded. If your boost returns, you know that your wastegate is bad and the correct fix is to replace the turbocharger on a cat. All right, so what we have here is a CAC out of a generator. And I did it here, that way we can look at it closer and kind of show you what we're gonna look for as far as damage. So this would be the inlet side, and this would be the outlet side of the CAC. And basically after the air gets boosted, 
gets pushed into this side. And this is similar to a radiator where it has these, these cores. And it gets pushed into this side and then goes through, comes out the other side, goes on the intake manifold. And what happens is, is the fan is sucking air through or you're driving down the road and the air is getting pushed through is it, it draws the air, the outside air, over these coils, or the cores, where the boosted air is, and it cools the air off. Normally when there's a leak, you want to look at the cores themselves, make sure nothing has struck them. Like, um, you know, maybe you've hit something in the front end of the vehicle, or anything like that, that would damage these. That would cause a leak. Usually when you get leaks, you get them on the welds, right here. That might be a small leak there. But the biggest source is where the cores meet the tank. Those welds crack a lot, just from the heat and the vibration. And if you have a leak, it's probably going to be somewhere on this side or this side. But typically more this side, the inlet side, because it's hotter. And uh, that's all there really is to a CAC. They're usually uh, cast aluminum, and they're uh, pretty expensive. So, that is it. Okay, so the purpose of this diagram that I have drawn up here is to talk about how the system works and how to visualize it if you're trying to troubleshoot it. So, I've already shown you the components and how they work. After this, I'll be talking about the twin turbo engines and the variable geometry turbocharger engines. But before we do that, we need to understand how the system works. So, basically what I'm going to be doing here is going through how the air flows, what you need to look for, troubleshooting, and we'll go from there. So, um, we'll start with where the air comes in. So, air comes in, goes through your air filter, and then it goes into your inlet turbine of your turbocharger. So, here's your components, your turbocharger, engine your CAC, air filter, muffler, DPF. You also have an oil supply and oil return line. And then these lines represent your intake tubes and exhaust tubes. So starting with your air filter, that's where your fresh air gets pulled in through, then goes to your inlet turbine of your turbocharger. And this is all under vacuum. There's no boost or anything before your turbocharger. So your turbocharger, then pushes the air after your turbocharger on the inlet side the air is boosted so you're gonna have anywhere from 0 to 30 psi and that's all typical for a single turbo engine it's going to then push the air which the air has been heated up as it's been compressed so it's a hot psi um, pressured air to your CAC, which stands for charge air cooler. Now, sometimes this is called an intercooler, aftercooler, or an ATAC, which I believe is CAT's proper term for it, which is an air-to-air -air aftercooler. So after it gets pushed through the CAC, it has been cooled because the CAC, purpose of that is to cool the air. Now, it doesn't get down to ambient temperature. It just cools it down from the hotter temperature to a lower temperature because cooler air is more dense, so you can get more of it into the intake charge. So, the cooled air then gets forced into the engine, which then consumes the oxygen in the air, and then pushes it out the exhaust. So this would be your exhaust manifold, which is then bolted to the turbocharger. It gets pushed through the exhaust turbine, and then it is forced out of the turbocharger, and it has to go through your muffler or your DPF. So this is not under boost here. It is under slight pressure because your exhaust is under pressure because it has to be forced through the DPF or muffler and it has to be forced through the turbocharger exhaust turbine. So what else components do you need to know? Well, all turbochargers are gonna have an oil supply line, which is that's full engine oil pressure and that is to help lubricate the bearings and keep the, the turbine shaft cool and it has a return line for the oil to get back to the engine. Okay, so if you're thinking, hey, I have a twin turbo setup or I have a variable geometry turbo setup, 
I'm gonna be addressing that in this video, but I wanna use a standard single turbo, basic turbo setup first so you get the principles down. The next section I'm gonna be going over the diagram again, but troubleshooting wise. So now that you know the components and where stuff's located, you can kind of visualize what I'm talking about. Now I'll be going over troubleshooting. After this diagram section, then I'll be talking about twin turbos, kind of the different components that, that tie in with them, and then the variable geometry I'll be talking about, okay? Also, before we start this troubleshooting section, I wanted to bring up, please check your boost pressure with a gauge as well as whatever gauge is mounted inside the dash. There have been several times where, hey, my boost is low. If you put a mechanical gauge on the engine next to where your boost pressure sensor is, sometimes it's just the sensor itself. So before you go spending money and troubleshooting, please make sure you put a gauge on there and make sure that it's actually low on boost, okay? So troubleshooting these systems, um, first thing you have to realize is that if you have an engine problem, say you have an engine miss, a knock, anything like that, a stumble, that's not going to be due to boost, typically. If you have an engine miss, it's most likely something with your valve train or an injector, something like that. And those can cause low boost issues. And we're here to figure out what's causing a low boost issue, but if it's an engine miss, you need to get that rectified first. So if you have an engine miss, you're going to have low boost. Doesn't mean the turbocharger is bad or the CAC is bad. So what can cause low boost? Well, what do you mean by low boost? So normally it's what was the boost before? So let's say you have a C15, a 6NZ C15. That's a single turbo. You're used to running low 30s on boost pressure. And one thing to know is the boost pressure sensor is on the engine. So it's over here. That's where your boost pressure sensor is. So normally you're reading 30, let's say 30 PSI of boost pressure normally under load. And now you're only showing 20. So is it the turbo? A lot of people ask that. Oh, okay, I got low boost, bad turbo. That's not accurate. Uh, the turbo can be the cause, but there are many other items that can be causing you a low boost issue. So let's go through them. Plugged air filter. Plugged air filter can cause low boost because if you have a restriction, you're not going to be getting as much air as that engine wants to use. So how's your air filter? Has it been serviced recently? Um, if not, that's a good place to start. So moving on from that point, um, inspecting the turbine and the turbocharger itself, you can spin the inlet and exhaust turbine. Do they spin freely? Does one side spin and the other side doesn't spin? If that's the case, you won't have any boost because the shaft is broken. Do you have a leak? A very common cause of low boost are leaks in these hoses. They're small, what they call hump hoses, between the turbocharger and intake tubes, intake tubes themselves, the charge air cooler, which I've already shown you. That can leak. That's a very high leak source is the CAC itself. And that can really cause you low boost codes or low boost problems is a leak in the CAC. Also, your boots and tubes going to your engine. So what else can cause low boost outside of engine problems? Well, your exhaust side can also cause low boost problems because, let's think about it, what spins the inlet turbine? Well, the exhaust turbine. So based on the amount of air, exhaust air we're talking about here that gets pushed through the exhaust turbine determines the rpms of the inlet turbine higher the inlet turbine rpms more air is going to get pushed out so you also need a higher volume of air getting pushed through the exhaust turbine so this is why you have a lag because you have to build up a lot of exhaust volume in order to push the inlet turbine RPMs up to get more boost pressure, which then increases your exhaust volume. So let's look at the exhaust side real quick. What could potentially cause issues with your turbo 
on the exhaust side. So a leak, let's look at this way. If you had a leak after the turbo, would that cause a low boost code? Well, no, because you've already pushed the air, the exhaust air that is, through the exhaust turbine. So a leak after the turbo on the exhaust side is not gonna cause you a low boost. A plug muffler or DPF would though, do you have a problem with the regen system? If it has a DPF, is the DPF plugged? Um, something causing high differential pressure to an inlet and exhaust side of the DPF. Uh, mufflers can be plugged as well. Do you have a crushed exhaust tube after the muffler or here somewhere? Um, a muffler DPF, if you're getting high back pressure before the muffler or DPF, that's gonna reduce the amount of exhaust that can get through the system. That's gonna reduce your boost. Do you have an exhaust leak before the turbo? If your exhaust manifold's broken, or you have a bad gasket, or the gasket going between the turbo and the exhaust manifold is blown out, that's reducing the amount of exhaust that's getting forced through that turbine. If that's the case, you're gonna significantly lose boost. So that's what you need to look at here, is not, oh, I got low boost of the turbocharger. You need to look at this system as an entire system. And once you start visualizing it as this system, it's almost a circle. Well, I guess this would be a square, actually. You understand that, okay, many things can cause low boost outside of the turbocharger. Now we're going to be talking about twin turbocharger systems and variable geometry systems, okay? Okay, so here's a twin turbo cat setup on a C15. So your air inlet comes in through this turbo. It then gets forced through and then it goes into your high pressure turbo. It then goes into a component that did not exist on these single turbo setups. So after the second turbo, the air gets forced into this tube here, and then it gets dumped into that block there, which you can see, that's called a pre-cooler. It's actually like a pre-CAC cooler. It's liquid to air cooled, so it uses coolant to cool it. So on the exhaust side, got your exhaust manifold here. The exhaust runs through this turbocharger, which is your high pressure turbocharger. It then runs into this turbocharger. So you'll notice there's only one wastegate. Now also, they each have their own oil line and oil return line. Now you'll notice that the hose runs from one turbo to the other turbocharger. So what it does is it picks up the boost signal from this turbocharger and then supplies that to the diaphragm on the other turbocharger. Most twin turbo setups are only going to have one wastegate setup. Okay, now on to the variable geometry turbochargers. We didn't have one in the shop and we haven't had one in a couple weeks that I could really tear apart and show you how they work, but the principles are very simple. I am going to show you the veins that are in them. I have a picture of that at least. So a variable geometry turbo or VGT turbo basically uses the same setup as a standard single turbocharger. There's an intake housing, an exhaust housing, and a single turbine with an intake and exhaust side. There's also an oil supply line and an oil return line. So what's the difference? Well, they don't have a wastegate for one. And the reason for that is there are small veins that increase or deflect the exhaust flow from the exhaust turbine. And they are actuated typically electrically by a solenoid that is mounted on the exhaust turbine. And the ECM controls that. And it's pretty similar whether it's a Cummins or Power Stroke or whatever. So what those veins look like, I'll be showing you here in a second. Um, what they do is they either deflect or increase the exhaust flow to the exhaust turbine. And that gives you a wider array of boost depending on how much boost the ECM wants to make. And that's the reason it doesn't need a wastegate. If the ECM says, hey, we want less boost, it deflects air away from the exhaust turbine. And it can also ask, act as your exhaust brake, not a jake brake, if on, especially on the smaller engines, 
Typically, they don't have Jake brakes, which are full engine brakes. They'll usually have an exhaust brake, which is a flap typically that'll close and it'll prevent air from passing in the exhaust. Well, you can use that variable geometry turbo also to act as your exhaust brake. So it saves two components, it saves a wastegate, and it saves your exhaust brake. However, they are much more expensive typically because they are one unit that has a solenoid now, it has the veins, they're typically heavier. Um, Cat used them on their C7S and C9S. They're heavy duty engines, never use the variable geometry turbos. Um, they're very common now on Cummins and uh, you know Packard's. Many of the other engines are using variable geometry turbos. Um, the longevity seems to be getting pretty good on them. On the Cats, on the C7s especially, they had a lot of problems initially with them pushing oil a lot. Um, so if you have a C7S or C9S and you're getting oil in your intake system, well, that's most likely going to be caused by your turbocharger, but it can also be caused by high blow-by pressure or high crankcase pressure as it's called, which can be caused by a plugged exhaust crankcase breather line, okay? So here's an exhaust housing on a VGT turbo. You can see the small veins. Those are what move the exhaust flow away or towards the exhaust turbine. Okay, so we've gone over components. We've gone over how the system works. We've gone over most of the troubleshooting. What else do we need to discuss? Well, we need to discuss a couple of the other things that can cause you low boost or troubleshoot turbocharger related issues outside of what we've already talked about. So we've talked about leaks mostly in the system causing low boost, but there's also another issue, especially on the VGT turbo ones that push oil your CAC can be plugged and your turbocharger can be working fine and you can have no leaks as far as boost leaks, but you could be getting low boost pressure. So what typically happens in that instance is debris and oil has collected on the in inlet side of that CAC and what it's doing is it's preventing air from properly flowing through that CAC. So you'll see low boost on the sensor because it's mounted on the outlet side well, it's typically mounted on the engine, but it's on the outlet side of the CAC. So what you need to do in that instance is get a manual gauge and run your engine. And if your boost pressure sensor is showing, let's say 20 PSI, but your CAC manual gauge that's before the CAC is showing, let's say 30 or 35, you know you have a plugged CAC. It will have to be removed and prefer hopefully cleaned, if not replaced. Another thing is, do you have engine damage? I mean, actual mechanical damage. Have you lost a valve, an injector tip, something like that? Um, now this doesn't necessarily mean you'll have low boost, but just remember anything that goes through that engine especially metal we're talking about here. And I mean in the combustion cycle, anything that goes through there goes through that exhaust turbine. And that exhaust turbine is very fragile. So if you lost a valve and you change a head or something and you think, oh, well, I'll just get away, I don't need new turbos. Just remember that that turbine has probably seen damage. And you can remove the housings on turbos, the intake and exhaust housings, and inspect those turbines. If they have nicks and damages, they should be replaced. And the reason for that is they spin to incredibly high RPMs. We're talking almost, you know, some of them go over 100,000 RPM on a turbocharger. So if you have a off balance turbine, well, that can lead to pretty catastrophic failure, especially if you have a twin turbo setup. If you lose one turbo, it's typically gonna take out the other one because on the intake or exhaust side, all the air and debris is gonna go through the other side of the turbocharger. So that's also something to keep in mind. If you think you're losing a turbo on a twin turbo setup, get it addressed quickly because you could save that other turbo. Okay, that's pretty much all I had to talk about with these turbos and CACs and the boost system. If you have any other questions, you can leave them in the comments section. 
Um, I am a CAT specialist. I'm not as much a Cummins or Detroit specialist. So if you have a manufacturer specific question that's not CAT related, I can try to help you, but I really am a CAT specialist. Okay, thank you for watching the video.